Hello, hello. Welcome to the Sanibel Captiva Guide podcast. I'd like to uh, welcome our friend here, Brian Holloway, Captain Brian Holloway. He is from Captain Brian on the Water. He has a charter company with a difference. And we've had, uh, we know some some of the same people and some of them have been on here, Tatum and... Uh, uh, what's uh, what's Dave Dave Godfrey. politically Godfrey? correct yeah. name? <laughs> yes, the uh, one and only Dave Godfrey. Yes. Dave Godfrey. One and only yes. is right. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> so basically, um, I thought it'd be great to have Brian on here because you have, you are a charter captain, uh, the registered licensed charter captain, but your tours are a little different a to little the others. So why, why, don't you, why don't you explain what you do and how you're different to the guys that do the fishing? Yeah, don't do any fishing. Um, they're all private customized charters. So uh, we'll focus on shelling, birding, wildlife, um, photography. I actually take people out to do photography and do uh, scout works for um, photo shoots and help produce some photo shoots for different magazines. Awesome. So cool. it's a wide variety. So it's we can just specialize whatever trip they'd, they'd like to do. Right. Every so day basic, is different. Basically, anything on the water that you want to do other than fishing, you'll do it. And you're actually quali you're a qualified naturalist. Is uh, that yeah, right? Certified uh, Florida Master Naturalist. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Cool. And how many people can you take? What's the maximum? I could take six. Six on your boat. Yeah. Four or five is kind of comfortable four right. more comfortable but gotcha. right <laughs> so and typically you're going to the islands the the, the 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 islands that you can't get to by road i'm assuming is that right yeah correct uh, i leave from captiva and i'll go to depending on what we're doing um uh, north captiva keo costa go a lot to cabbage key um pine island okay and some of the uh, little rookery islands very cool and where from captiva do you leave Leave from McCarthy's Marina. Mm -hmm. So Marth McCarthy's Marina, which is at the end of Andy Ross Lane. Yep, correct. And uh, the opposite end to the Mucky Duck. Yep. And uh, yep. yeah, perfect. And you've been on the island how long? Uh, 28 years. 28 years. Just a and short amount of time. Yeah. And where fast. are you from originally? I'm originally from Nebraska. Oh, like, wow. Okay, oh, wow. what's a Nebraska boy doing in... Yeah, uh, you know, I grew Fort up at... Meyer, Sanibel. <laughs> get that a lot yeah. uh actually you know i grew up around a, a big uh, body of water a lake and i scuba dived when i was 13 <coughs> always uh into the uh, water and, and where was that in nebraska what part it was western nebraska on the edge of the sand hills uh, the lake was called lake mcconaughey mm. really mm. Yep. so what was the connection to sanibel uh well actually i i just wanted to live on an island i was in college and um in nebraska did you go to college in nebraska i ended up yeah in nebraska uh, I spent a summer living in Hawaii with a friend I went to college with my first semester up in North Dakota. Uh, and he lived on Kauai, and I went and lived uh, with him in the summer of um, back in the 80s. And uh, liked the islands, and I always liked the islands. I get yeah. Islands Magazine when I was little. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so then the I just, yeah, so then I just had to finish uh, college. So after I finished college, um, I did an internship down in Jamaica for six months. Oh, wow. So I was down there. And, and what then, were you doing there? I was, my major was, uh, then it was, it was fitness and leisure management. I worked at a resort mm. in uh, outside of Montego Bay. And on my days off, I would volunteer and work at the uh, Montego Bay Marine Park. So I'd do activities with those guys. I would go what, diving with a uh, marine biologist, uh, Malden Miller, on every day off. He would do fish counts in the, uh, in the reef there. Mm -hmm. So I would stay pretty busy. We do stuff in the uh, John Crow Mountains and some some turtle stuff down there as well. Cool. Wow! So and then so you came here. So it's a pretty unusual uh, back then, I'm sure. Like to do charters and not do fishing. I'm sure it was quite a novel idea. I mean, yeah. there's not even now today. There's not too many of you, I don't think, uh, that do what you do. Y yeah, maybe not as many. Uh, there's some that do shelling and stuff like that. But also, I've worked for Captiva Cruises running their boats for, oh, okay. for, for many years and also doing my own. Okay. Gotcha. okay. So, but when I first started out, I want to say I first started out when I was doing my own charters, I first started doing uh, interpretive archaeology trips over to Pine Island. Mm. Oh, really? This is back oh. in the 90s. And, um, so we talk about Calusa. Is that where you yeah, were trying I, to? I would the take Indians? them. Yep, what is now uh, the Randell Research Center. Mm -hmm. And they've done a, a superb job over there. Yeah. Uh, back in the late 90s, it was a little more rough and a little more rugged and mm -hmm. 
cows running around over there in the pasture <laughs> and uh, tall grass and a lot of water. But right. uh, So that's on the southern end of Pine Island? It's on the north end at Pineland. Oh, is where okay. That's at. Yes. Okay, yeah. Pine, so, Pineland so is where the marine... Where, Tarpon Lodge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And okay. if you're visiting the Santa Bal Captiva, it's definitely worth a trip over there. Even if not by boat, by car to visit the Randall either, Research Center. Both, yes. Either yeah. way, by car, I tell people, or, you know, by boat. E- any way you can get there, it's a uh, beautiful, it's just over 70 acres now of an uh, archaeological site mm-hmm. with beautiful mounds. It's a very, very peaceful place. Love it over there. Right. And the mounds are from the Calusa Indians, correct? Yes. Explain about the Indian mounds to people. Yeah. The, uh, the Native Americans that were here were the Calusas, and they uh, were shell mound builders. And those are some of the biggest ones around over on, um, some of them, over on Pine Island. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they lived on the mounds, and that was... Uh, and they've I, preserved them, luckily, because I know... Um, some of the past the mounds that they actually took them and built roads with them and stuff. So we don't have many left. So they've actually preserved them over there for people to see now. Yes, that is that is correct. They have, and um, they did use some part of the mounds for fill back in I think the twenties on some of those mounds, but but they're now they're protected. Right. And thank goodness. Yeah, they some of the coolest finds over there. I always tell people are. You know, they found chili pepper seed and papaya seed dating back to 50 AD. Really? And they're like, how did they get there? Yeah, uh, that's it, kind of, it's the only uh, chili pepper that's found on this side of the, that old, right. this side of the Mississippi River. Really? really? Yeah. So it's wow. very, very fascinating. Yeah, so definitely make a trip over there. Yeah. yeah. Check it out. So and so you do a lot of shelling trips, I understand, and... Um, Tell us a little bit about that, how you, how that goes. Yeah. Shelling trips are, they're, they're always fun. Um, you know, every day is, you know, if you're a sheller, you know, every day is a different day and you don't know what you're going to find, right. but you um, can't guarantee a Genonia for every I customer can't, no. only on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Tuesdays and Thursdays <laughs> after <laughs> four. Let, let's yeah, just after four. Set, the, set the picture here first in case you haven't, in case you don't know what a, an Island is, uh, uh, Santa is for shelling. It is probably one of the, Super Bowl spots, I would say, for shelling in the world. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a well-known spot. So we have the best of the best coming here. So you are showing people that with high expectations of things that you wouldn't find necessarily elsewhere. So uh, for those of you who don't understand how good of shelling it is here, you you know what I'm talking about. But sorry, carry on what you're saying. So yeah, so I'll go with the uh, shellers. We'll go out to the out islands and I'll I'll walk with them and. Uh point out different shells and ask if there's maybe some shells that are i have some clients that like to look for certain species so you actually get out the boat and you actually walk along with the clients yeah i walk with them uh, along the beach uh and you know tell them everything we're looking at and because i'll be up there a lot and i'll know how the beach changes so it, it will look completely different one day and if we're looking for certain species i'll have an idea of where that could be in the rack line whether it's a small shell or so I'm constantly scouting for the next trip. Okay. Right, right. So, really? Okay. So oh, I'm because always, they come in in waves? Is that right? Or is the well, there may be something that, like, say, you know, I've got you and you like broken. Believe it or not, a lot of people like broken, like a lightning whelk shells. They'll make arrangements out of them. Oh, and oh really? Just okay. looking for that. So when I'm looking at the beach, I look at it totally different. I'm looking at all different shells. Want. Yeah, and who I who who's going to be the next sheller that right. I have, and kind of what they want. So I always talk to the people to see awesome. how long they've been shelling, and um, what kind of species Just they trying to customize to what they want. Exactly. Explain to people what the rack line is, because I know you use that term. So. Yeah, rack line is up where the uh, kind of at the top of the beach line where you get a whole rack of shells. Uh, for example, right now, three weeks ago, we got a really strong winds. And there's a huge rack line uh, up at Cayo Costa that um, actually it's starting to get wind blown right now because the wind switched the other day. But I didn't, I didn't even get a chance to go through all these shells. Oh, really? So yeah. Many. So so I mark all those things in my mind because you may think, oh, those have been there forever. And I'm like, those have been there for about three weeks and nobody's really hardly even looked at those. And now wow. they have right. sand because the wind switched. So I know that there's still good shells Ooh. in that oh. area. Oh. 
So, so, good to, so, so good to know a man in the know. Right. So you recommend <laughs> shelling in the rack line? Because I think a lot of people will come and shell in the water, won't they? On the water's edge. Yeah. Um, either could be good. Either. The rack lines are, you know, especially after the wind, can be pretty good. Um, you know, here's another question. A lot of people go, well, I want to go at low tide. And, you know, I'm sure people probably disagree, but that isn't the always the end all for shelling because if you have strong winds the day before it could throw up all these shells above the high tide line and even though it's a very high tide there can still be a lot of really good shells sometimes people miss out by only going at low tide which is true because like we're after a big storm we all know that the sea levels will raise anyway so it, you never you might not even get that low tide as it normally is anyway you exactly know, the pressures will keep the water high anyway won't they yeah, wind is the biggest uh, dictates all. If we get a north wind, um, the wind is, you know, it pushes the water out. If the wind's out of the south, it pushes it even higher. Mm. So and you, do you use an app on your phone to track wind, or how do you, or you just know it all now after 30 years? No, I actually, I have some wind apps and, you know, the tide apps. and mm -hmm. Anything it, you recommend for people? Actually, the one that's the local that's great is the uh, Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation is uh, has a recon. So that gives you actual out in the middle of uh, Captiva, Redfish Pass, it's in from Redfish Pass. That gives you the actual wind speed right out there. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So you can. So I compare that to another app that I have. So even when I'm off, I'll look at it and compare the wind to what it says to this app. Mm -hmm. And this app's usually right on. Oh, really? So you can see the true wind at out on the water. Wow. Instead wow. of, you know, okay, it's going to be 15 to 17. Right. Which is Fort completely Myers. different. I, I fly paramotors, and we can literally have um, weather in Fort Myers, which, uh, you know, three miles away, that is absolutely nothing like it is when we're right on the coast. If there's, you know, an onshore breeze or it's, you know, um, it can be completely different, can't it? Oh, yeah. 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 Interesting. That's interesting. cool. So shelling. So talk about the photography tour. So people bring their own cameras. Is that how it works? Or? Yeah, they'll bring their own cameras. Um, and you know, different types, different levels of photographers. But um, we'll go out, and some people just want to shoot landscape. So we'll shoot landscape. Uh, sometimes we'll shoot the uh, fish houses. Right, which are. Fish houses are cool. Iconic. There's actually one back behind us there. Actually behind it. I don't think you can see it. You probably can't see it. But no. as one, a picture of one behind us. <laughs> Brian's <laughs> yeah. hiding it. Yeah. So, yeah, so a lot of times we'll shoot. Uh, we've been shooting uh, like a couple of days ago. We went out and shot a lot of birds, wildlife. Um, and, of course, like right now, white pelicans. Yesterday, actually. We, we saw roseate spoonbills, Max and I. Oh, wait, Max wasn't with me. I went through Ding Darling the other day. There's roseate spoonbills there. Those are always nice oh, those are awesome so, yeah you said yeah. pelicans are are coming around now the oh the white, white pelicans, pelicans yeah yeah you know, yesterday believe it or not i saw a thousand white pelicans up by keo costa did you count them are i did sure? yeah i did <laughs> every single one i kind of have a habit of counting the, the <laughs> i counted That's there was insane. a lot in ding darling too yeah yeah so i'll take notes be, and, yeah they must be about for sure yeah the, so they are they migra migratory or Migratory? What's, yeah, they're migratory. They'll the, the white pelicans. They'll show up usually uh, second week in October when we get that first cold front, mm -hmm. and they'll be here till about the end of March. Really, they are beautiful birds. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're and they were flying all over yesterday. It was they, they head further south as well, don't they? Yeah, they'll be down in Florida Bay, uh, south of the Ten Thousand Islands. And Do they go down to Cuba as, that far or no? I don't know if they make it as far as Cuba. Yeah, I know that they'll be all over in the Ten Thousand Islands, really? Chukaluski, and I got a question for you. So we, I was filming, sometimes I'll go through, I have one of the passes for Ding Darling, and Max and I just bought a new lens, so I was going to check it out, and I was on my way to a shoot out on Captiva. So I went through uh, Ding Darling, the roseate spoonbills were there, and they would not stop, like, shaking their heads. Have you seen that behavior before? It's, like, constant. They were, I don't know if they were preening or if they... Have you ever seen that? It's uh -huh. just constant, like, I was shooting in slow-mo. I was filming, actually. 
I'll have to uh, put it on. Have you ever seen that before? I have not seen that behavior, no. Yeah, it's really, r- really bizarre. I don't know if there was something in the sand that they were trying to sort through or if it was a... I mean, they'll feed, you know, that way. Were they, were they feeding? Or maybe. Was it a, maybe. I mean, was their face like, in the water? Or is, did they no, just they were just sort of picking at the water and then sort of fluffing their feathers and then just keep shaking their head violently. Did, from side to did side. they agitate oh. the sand to try to get to rustle yeah. stuff up? I don't know what yeah, they were that's, doing. They'll yeah. kind of feed like that. Yeah, what do they, they, what it was do they out eat? of the water. Do you know? Uh, I'm sure you do. Yeah, small, small Crustaceans, fish. isn't it? Isn't that why they're pink? It must be crustaceans, right? I would say small... Small fish. Oh, maybe. Okay. All right. I know the wood stork has the fastest of, I think, of any animal when they snap their... Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, like one of the fastest movements in the animal kingdom. Really? Yeah. And it's, where do you go for landscape photography? Uh, I do a lot on Cayo Costa for really? landscape. Uh, sometimes the middle part of North Captiva, which is a state park. Really? Yeah. Certain times a year. Um, I'm real big on the clouds. I love so, clouds. So we shoot a lot of clouds. Love clouds. Clouds and um, sea oats when they got a full. Really? When they're in full, uh, you know. Bloom. Bloom, which is kind of a tricky thing because. Yeah, when they're not dry. You go yeah. them when they're not dry. And you, you have a small window because uh, I, I, I'm kind of a purist. <laughs> and when turtle season starts, uh, you get tracks on the beach. No, oh, yeah. so you don't want the tracks. I don't so, want the tracks. Oh, from the t- Turtle Patrol. I, yeah, so if you're shooting shooting like this, and you know, I love love all the Turtle Patrols, you know, K.O. Cost, and what but it's a different, you have yeah. these tracks on this beach. Beautiful yeah. Right. scene. Yeah, so you kind of. You need to get a rake. <laughs> no, yeah. you Never can't do that. <laughs> yeah, you kind of, you, actually you can use a uh, palm frond. <laughs> yeah. That, for, you know I've that from experience? That yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when is the ultimate... When's the penultimate time to get the sea oats without the turtle track, the turtle when they're control? Healthy. Well, it's, well, you know, turtle season starts basically around May 1st, and then they, they, they the sea oats don't really fully head out till later. So it's, okay. you just kind of got to get lucky on, I, I have some day. places, yeah, I'll look where they get a little curve in the beach. So you, oh, can so you can't come. see the tracks. So yeah, because the tracks, they do a really good job of staying low. Right. And that right. they're trained to do that because I've been through the training. Mm. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. And yeah. They, that that's very well covered. So, you know, they, they stay low and they can kind of get, you know, out of it. But sometimes, you know, with higher tide or something. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've just, you know, been up there before, get up early and you're like. Do they yeah. have a patrol up on, on the uh, upper islands or not? Oh yeah, turtle they patrols. Do. Yeah, they do. Last yeah. year there was just uh, over four hundred uh, sea turtle nests on Cayo Costa. But did they have a, they have the, the like the little um, golf cart thing? The yeah, um, an official patrol. I the guess, official patrol is what I'm saying. Like, a... oh yeah, it's official. It's uh, Florida Gulf Coast students. Oh, is it? Now. Okay. Yeah, that do that. Uh, uh, the professor is very good. Uh, the students are very well trained up there, That's and cool. they do a good job. And do they live up there, for, or do they come? How, how did they get there? They actually go to Pine Island and catch the uh, the boat that the rangers have, and they have to take that uh, every morning over there. Early. And that leaves like at 7.30. Okay. And um, they get over to the island, get on the their uh, four-wheeler t- turtle patrol, and then, you know, eight and a half miles of beach, they've got to survey. Oh, wow. So when you get a lot of nests, that's a full day. That's yeah. Strong. And they, I'd say we've had, it's not the first time we've had a couple of people coming in recently saying about... Um, if you've got kids or if anybody's interested in in this line of work like the type of work you're doing or marine biology or anything like this this is they've got a fantastic program apparently at uh, fgcu fgcu and there's a lot of people seeking it out we've had uh parents with kids working at uh the school sea santa school. Ski, sea school and then who was it who was in recently so uh, adventures the, in paradise adventures in paradise have got interns and so there's some really cool uh, openings for people yeah. that want to go into that line of work in this area. Yeah, and they have some good programs at uh, FGCU. Yeah. Uh, yeah sure. Some really good professors and programs. <clears throat> he was in charge of the uh, the turtles. Uh, but a uh, long time ago, I took classes just because I wanted to just take classes. Fun. Yeah, I think <laughs> I got like 30 credit hours there. <laughs> wow. But uh, I took uh, one of the... Uh, one of my favorite professors is uh, Wynn Abraham. He's a Florida Gulf Coast student. Um, I got lucky enough to go on their first abroad trip. 
Oh, where'd you go? With when I uh, went down to the Amazon. No, no, way. Way. no way. Yeah, oh, it was cool. FG or uh, um, it was our first abroad trip for the uh, college. It was a relatively new college, I guess. It started in 90s? early, uh, yeah, late nineties. Yeah. Late nineties. Um, this was two thousand when we went to the Amazon. Two thousand. There was probably about three thousand students back then. Yeah, not <laughs> not much. Now yeah. it's up to what fifteen thousand, maybe. I don't even I think know what that, that is. Yeah. Probably twenty. I bet. Yeah. Is it? Probably. Yeah. 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 It's definitely come a oh, long way. That. But yeah, yeah, it's an incredible. Co- so, facility. how was your Amazon experience? I bet it was incredible. great. You know, I'm uh, I was researching a lot of uh, one of my mentor hero guys, Richard Evan Schultz. He was a ethnobotanist uh, from Harvard, and he discovered a lot of different species of rubber and plants, and uh, also did a lot of uh, work with the native natives all over with uh, hallucinogenics. Oh, really? From really? Uh, yeah, from. Uh, Stuff in Oklahoma to the uh, Aztec to. Um, Did you have to partake? I didn't partake, but I got to meet a shaman down there and oh, really? document yeah. his garden. And he made some ayahuasca, which is a hallucinogenic. And uh, it, it's really not, well, now they did like different than it was then, but it really isn't recreational. They'll take it and sometimes it'd be like a little offering. He didn't offer it, but he showed me how he made it, and he showed me where he got the the leaves from on the tree, uh, different parts of the tree. So I got to document all that. And oh, that's like, cool. Yeah. It's a spiritual thing, right? Uh, yeah, there's some different takes to it now than there was back in 2000. People can go down there now, and I mean, it. I don't really consider it like recreational. It's more uh medicinal sort of thing yeah right? spiritual really because yeah, it's yeah. kind of the shamans would take it or if you were sick you know you may take it and uh oh very cool so very cool. but he was a, he was a really cool ethnobotanist and uh another one of his students wade davis who's a famous ethnobotanist here's what he said about ayahuasca he said it's like uh getting a shot through a c- cannon lined with baroque paintings Landing on a sea of electricity. <laughs> <laughs> that that is, blast. Is, yeah, what a, a, what a description. <laughs> that sounds horrible oh to me. <laughs> no, thank oh, you. Oh shoot! So, oh my gosh. So your tour is seven days a week. You run, or how does that work? Uh, so. not probably seven. You know, five. Sometimes more, depending. Yeah. You know, it's. I get a lot of repeat clients or people I've had for years mm-hmm. that can only go on a certain day. Yeah. So kind of move things around gotcha. and yeah. how do they find you do you have a website yeah media? captain brian on the water.com and uh have facebook captain brian on the water um are you on instagram too yeah captain brian captiva oh you C- have to switch it up there yeah yeah awesome how often do you find a genonia you know in my 28 years i have found three and you're doing it professionally i'm doing it uh shelling over 200 days a year uh, let's just say like about four, four hundred and fifty trips a year. Uh, uh, and you I found doing three. Them. I found three. Do you still have uh, them in your possession? Yeah, I do. Really? Yeah. Wow, we should have had you bring them in. Yeah, I found one on the last day of the year, nineteen ninety six. Uh, that was my was, fir- was first be one. A good year. When was the last one? Uh, it was uh, last January. I had a friend from uh, high school. He'd never been down here and um, never even seen shells or a dolphin <laughs> or anything and uh. We you showed him a good time. I found a Genonia that day, and he was just looking at me. I wasn't even working. I was just, we were just on the beach. I was showing no, him around, why? and I was like, I was like, wow. Those are, those are. And he was like, wow. And he, he really, really <laughs> Probably had no that. idea, did he? No, but so, so what I did then is we took it to the newspaper. Oh, oh yeah. you did? So yeah. him and I holding this, you know, <laughs> I, I've known him since I've been like five. Here we are. So we sent it to our whole class. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And the, was that on Sanibel or the Upper Island? Where did you find your that, that was up at Cayo Costa. Okay. All three on Cayo Costa? Uh, yeah, one, um, two at Cayo Costa and one at... Secret spot number two. Oh, ah, okay. Secret ah. safe with us. <laughs> well, you have to take Captain Moran's tour and he might <laughs> reveal his secrets too. <laughs> awesome. So it's photography. You're doing shelling. You're doing the uh, archaeological stuff. So really is something for everybody. So definitely go and check out Captain Brian on the water for sure. Max, yeah. have you got any uh, trivia for us? Are you, what you got there? I, I, think, I, have, I think I have uh, a few questions. Is it about... 
ethnobiology or what was that Ethnobiology. Ethnobotany. 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 I don't even know what that means. So I'm hoping it's not ethnobotany. I have, I have a few. Oh. Okay. All right. Go on then. All right. So this is a... This is a uh, Oh, we're all playing. Brian, yeah. Brian could tell me if I'm wrong here, but this is based on my research. I found um, Sanibel's known for its shelling. How many shells are known to be found here? Ooh. Oh. So this is, I mean, it's obviously it's, a, it's an it's estimate. Subjective. Right, exactly. But I bet he could give us a pretty close answer. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> oh, Nick's still contemplating. I oh, we spoke. You, Brian, Brian and I spoke about this. Are you tabulating? The other week. Oh, I think yeah. Yeah, you're tabulating. But I, I, I could be like off by hundreds of. I could be off a lot. All right. Well, uh, then you go first. Well, of course, <laughs> make me go first. Cause I'll make myself look a fool. Twenty-one thousand something. Twenty-one thousand. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't know. Don't judge. <laughs> don't judge. I put two hundred and forty-five. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. Uh, it's just under four hundred. Oh, is it? Is According that right? To, uh, yeah, Jose at the Shell Museum. Really? That's uh, just wow. under 400. Okay, so, I mean, based on my quick Google search, I had 250 plus. So, Mom, you would have been right, but well, Captain Brian ah. is, is 100% right. <laughs> I I, I'll it take was, his I word for it. I thought you were talking about how many in this particular cubic meter just behind us. I, I didn't know. <laughs> 21,000, yeah. yeah. On close. the planet. In the park. It's very close, yeah. <laughs> There's been 167 documented on uh, Kea Costa. Really, sixty-seven. Yeah. Really, yeah. all right. Huh. Wow. And was it was that from the Shell lady that lived out there? Yeah, or? it was. Her name was Carol Sellers. Right. Tell yeah. us a little bit about Carol. Sellers. Oh, this is an interesting story. This yeah. is a fascinating story to yeah, me. Yeah, so. I I never actually met her. Um, she is. I was kind of on the south end of the island. She was a little bit farther up. Um, but she lived up there. She moved up there in the seventies and. Um, I think it was still after Hurricane Charlie. I think she passed away at 92. She uh, uh, went through uh, six husbands and um, would shell every day. And that comes from the uh, information that she'd written down in 1981. And I always kind of refer back to that list. Mm-hmm. Um, some and she found how many species? 167. 167. Well, she documented them all. She documented wow. 167, yeah. Which wow. not, a lot, not a lot of people know about um and does, and what she, happened to her collection? Do you know? I do know. It's somewhere currently safe. And Good. hopefully one day it'll be displayed back on the somewhere. island oh, and displayed. Okay. Really? Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Mysterious. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Think. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So she moved there purely to be a shell off. Well, I don't know. Did she, she was, just you know, get away from her? She wanted to get away. She uh, Things were getting too fast paced for her on Sanibel. <laughs> oh. Oh. She, she, was, she came from person. Sanibel to Cayo Costa. Yeah. And, and what she, year was that? When I believe she, it was 1974. It was in the 70s. And she would go out every single day shelling during oh. her time. And on, just lived in yeah. a tiny little... Did she have With electricity? no electricity? Uh, no, there's no power up there, no. no. Power. I think she had a generator that she'd crank up like every Friday. It was a big day to watch her soap operas. Oh, uh, from what it. I heard, um, that is so funny. Yeah, I read that. Yeah. Wow, uh, that's fascinating. And I think there I can't is, imagine. There's a memorial, I think, to her. There is up at, there that you yes. can actually visit. Yeah, I actually went there when they did that. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. You dedicated that to her. Can the I, I didn't. No, it's park did. Um, okay, the public. Yeah. So there was just a handful of people there. Mm-hmm. And can the public actually get to that? No, site? not really. It's okay. kind it's of on the private back end. in the yeah. Oh, okay. It's back in. Mm-hmm. Like a little far in there. It's like a being in an African safari back wow. in there. And that's yeah. where she lived back there. Is yeah. her hut still back there? No, nope, it's not. It was destroyed or disassembled? Yeah, kind of. T- Hurricane Charlie kind of did it in back 2004. So. And I think yeah. I read that she didn't even leave during storms. Hurricane. Most of the time, I don't think she did, no. So um, she just hunkered down. Yeah. Um, Brave lady. Just that's insane, insane. Well, now, yeah okay. anyway well she's done a great describe. job for documenting shows that's what that's for sure you know? and, and i have some clients too that uh uh because um an, a sh- superb shelling guide mike fury oh yeah uh, sure. we know, my, yeah. his, his son friend. is my best friend yeah uh, thomas yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah there you go yeah well mike fury he uh he's a great guy he was uh an early guide on on captiva fishing and shelling and mm-hmm. then just shelling 
and uh, Mike wrote a book back in, I believe, 1982. I should have brought it in. Yeah, yeah uh, Laurie has it, don't you? I think you I have a few have of his yeah, books, I, I think. Yeah. I have a couple, like three or four. But anyway, Mike would Mike is um, uh, someone that I respect a lot, and he, and, and actually that's why I didn't really go up to that area because that was kind of his area, oh, shelling his patch, I guess. Yeah. So I kind of respected that and mm. stayed farther south. Gotcha. So ah. that doesn't really happen today, but no. <laughs> right. um, professional courtesy. Yeah. yeah, and so Mike would go up there. So Mike Mike knew her very well. Um, yeah, and he would take her stuff and. So he's the one that really knew um, Carol Stellars. Right. right, which we need to have Mike on. If well, Mike, Tom if you're told listening. me that Tom told me that that Mike was there at the at the uh, the memorial when they had put the uh, yeah. Yes, the, I took him up there. I told Mike about it. Really? Yeah, because I knew he he didn't know about it. So mm-hmm. Mike actually went up in my boat. It was a uh, okay. Hopefully, we're going to look into the camera and so. say we Mike. want Mike. We want you to come <laughs> on the podcast. I'm sure he has some amazing stories to yeah. share that we don't want. To get lost <laughs> yeah. to history. Yeah. 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 Good guy. That's awesome. That's awesome. awesome. All right. How did we get off our t- trivia questions? Because that was <laughs> an interesting story. <laughs> about that is Carol. The lonely lady on the up again. Yeah. If you want to oh, read no. more, maybe lonely, Carol maybe Sellers. Maybe she had it all figured out. All right. Uh, all right. All right. I'm going to come back with a strong, strong answer this time. <laughs> all right. So. The last one was pretty bad. We have. We're, we're, we've been talking close. around this, the surrounding islands of uh, Santa Mel and Captiva. So one of those surrounding islands is Cabbage Key. Mm-hmm. What is the full-time population of Cabbage Key? Ooh. Oh. It's, it's cyclical because yeah. there's a rotating... So are we talking summer or winter? On average, it, what, average. Is the, what is the population? Oh, because wow. the, the, the employees live there right. throughout the year. Right. Not all of them. Not all of them. No. Mm-hmm. It's not actually true. So I gave you a range. So there's a range. Okay. But... What's the, all right, let's. including the employees, and then I believe it's the Wells. Yeah, yeah. the Wells, the family, the family. Right. I'm just from going another one. It. This is from my research, so I could be right. I could be wrong. <laughs> as the as the commissioner of trivia, I take this very seriously. Yes, I can see. And this is uh, our friend Dave is there as the yes uh, the dock master there. Oh yeah, Dave is a big girlfriend. All okay. Right. Did, did lucky, you see looking? I already so wrote looking it. Again. She's looking I'm again. She's no cheater. I can't yeah. help but mm. see what no, you wrote. No, no, yeah. <laughs> no, what did you write? Come on. Then. All, All right. right. I put 75. I Nick. put 60. Brian? 13. Brian wins. It's 15 to 28 is is the estimate. Uh, so, yeah, you're the, oh, definitely the nearest. It was, that It is low, isn't it? That's... Tight. They so don't I have that it, much housing for them, actually. Right. Really? Really? So that's few, kind of uh, so. If you take, uh, yeah. But yeah. but think how many visitors they get a day with everybody going out to try the cheese. Oh, well, we stayed there on the in one of the the cottages, and it's like it's incredible. You're there at night, when, and you would know that you go, you walk around, and there's nobody. <laughs> and then literally, as the day gets along, then people it goes from nobody to 500 people there eating lunch, doesn't it? You yeah, know? it does. Yeah. 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 So all 15, 20 people running it all. <laughs> and totally, if you're a boater and you want a place to stay, 1,000% recommend it. It's the coolest place ever to wake up at sunrise and pull out of there on your boat. Yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. And you take some of your charters there, I assume, to eat Yeah, the I was there yesterday, burgers. actually. Oh, you were? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, Cabbage Key's great, and it's a great place to stay. They have little cottages yeah. you can stay in. Uh, they have great breakfast there if you stay there. Um, and then, uh, you know, lunch, it does get busy. And then uh, dinner is just so It has a lot of different moods to it. Yeah. It and does, it, yeah. They're all different. Breakfast is quiet. It gets busier at lunch. Dinners are, are great. It's quiet. They have candles in the back porch there. Yeah, yeah. we sat there really on the good. back porch and had dinner and yeah. some wine. It's great. And, and, and the food is great yeah, yeah it's good yeah yeah we love it we love it we're big fans all, all right, right. Okay. So one more question one more question oh, yeah, i mean he's gonna win obviously oh the, actually with this next question he, he, he might have points? it uh, well this is here we go so florida state shell is the largest shell in the united states and the second largest in the world what is it <laughs> it's not the genonia it's not. Okay, not. I <laughs> am still shocked that you've only found three in your entire I'm career. I'm shook too. That is a serious <laughs> testament to the rarity of the Genonia. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also random. I mean, maybe you could walk on the beach five times and find one. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, you know. And why you get your picture in the paper? Because I, I prefer a lion's paw over Genonia myself. 
Really? Do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Favorite? yeah. Really? How yeah. many of those have you found? I've probably found uh, 14, 15. Yeah. I didn't realize they were that rare. I, I, they're pretty. Or is it rare because to be intact, in is that what it is? Which one? The lion's palm? Yeah. Uh, they're also kind of a deep water shell. That oh, they are? 60 to 80 feet. Yeah, yeah. So they don't, they don't roll in as much. Oh, gotcha. They're gotcha. pretty shells. So or- yeah. Orange in color. They could be orangish yeah. and purple. Oh, purple. I, mean, I haven't seen that. They look, they look big. They, well, I mean, they, I've seen them up this big. Really? To, you know, this big. Right. Dang. You cool. must have a hell of a collection yourself. I, you know, I, I do have a pretty good collection, but the funny thing is when I'm, when I'm out chartering, I'm really not picking up shells for myself. You can't be You're taking them from right. the people. Oh, right. you don't You're stamp like, on yeah. one and then hide it so they walk past. Right. Get, get, <laughs> jump that's in front of them. You say, oh, that's nothing. I mean, I'll, I'll just throw that away for yeah. you. <laughs> I usually, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up a, you know, I have a hard time walking by a nice lettered olive. Oh, okay. So I, 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 I he's tell, a sucker for a lettered olive. <laughs> so I'll throw those in my. Uh, His scruples go out the window for a lettered olive. I mean, because well, if there's a lot of them and everybody's finding them, uh, yeah, like, oh, right. Man, this like I brought two home the other day. I tell everybody the best place to go shelling is in my dryer. Right. Yeah. Just, uh, like, clink, clink, clink. Oh, forgot to take that <laughs> olive out. I guess it's damaged now. Oh, yeah. That's funny. That happens. Okay. Uh, All right, right, Brian. You want to tell uh, us the answer? I'm, I'm, it is the horse conch. I got that too. Hey. I got that. I got that. Did you? He just put generic. You, you just put conch. A conch. Conch. It is a conch. <laughs> no. It is a conch. Oh, it is it's a an conch. automobile. That's like, um, that's like saying feline. Conch, uh, if your dog, if you wanted to name a species of dog, you just say dog. Right. <laughs> and, the, and the world's record is right down the road here at the Santa Bell at the Shell Museum. Is it really the world's record horse conch? Really? Oh, yeah. Was it found here? Uh, it was found off Sanibel, I believe, in about 80, 200 feet of water. Oh, yeah, nice. Scuba diving. Uh, I, I can't probably, confirm. I think probably back this, in the day. It, it may have been maybe, taken I think when maybe. it was live shelling. I'm not for sure. Right. right. It. Uh, I think it says it. But, I mean, it's pretty cool that it's right here on Sanibel. Yeah, it's what, like up to two feet they get, right? This one, I believe, is maybe 24 or 26 inches. Jeez, yeah. that is a big old shell. That's so a helmet. Don't check out the, it's a one fucking of our private places. That, yeah. The Bailey Matthews <laughs> Bailey's Shell. Matthews yeah. Shell Museum, That's which I know you're... You're in. Uh, you're, you 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 have close con- connections too as well. Um, well, I just like to support them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You yeah. Know, I'm I'm a shelling guide and. And speaking of yeah, support, I see you ha- your hat. Tell us about the Captiva Historical Society. Are you part of the historical societies out? On the yeah, island? actually, uh, I am. I'm a new board member. Excellent. Oh, really? So looking forward to doing some projects up there with them and helping out uh, on some of their. I've been helping out on some of their filming of a upcoming documentary. Oh, awesome. what's, what's the documentary? Uh, Captiva Fishing. So, um, been helping track down some of the old uh, old time fishing guides. Oh, oh cool. cool! And Very get cool. some of their really really like cool. My, Captain stories. Mike. Yeah, I tried to get Mike. I need to recall him again. Uh, He's a hard man to track you. down. Mike. Yeah. Captain Mike, Mike, we're coming for so, you. Some of those guys, they got some cool stories. Yeah, and, yeah, so when, I'm sure. When some can we expect? Us. Do you know when the release? It's on the schedule. I think it's going to be out in March. So they'll have a viewing. Uh, uh, it's somewhere, maybe yeah. up at Captiva, but it's on the. Event. We'll post about it when it comes right. out. And yeah. I know yeah. they do some of their events at Southseas too. I think. Yeah, actually, it probably will be like the Buck Key one. It'll be up at the, probably the ballroom at Southseas. Actually, mm. that's where it will be. Right. Yeah. So check out their website, the Captiva Historical Society website. They just had an art exhibit. Um, but is it still going on now, or is it just that one night? No, it's still going on for another week. Well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we when this is released, night, that'll so be it'll be gone. It'll be done by the time but, this comes right. out. But, but there's, yeah, there's check some it out. Other great stuff coming up for the rest of the season. So check that out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, one last time. So we got uh, we're going to put your info in the in the links in the description below. Check it out. Very knowledgeable man. Anything else you we anything missed? else we should know about? Anything uh, got coming up? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> Max might have a question for you. We got Max. No. No, I'm out. Well, Wait, he well, normally asks one question. Oh, I do have one question. <laughs> I, I always ask. If you had to say one best thing for somebody visiting the islands, what would it be? And you're not allowed to say shelling. Or go on your tour. <laughs> uh, the one thing to see if you're here. Well, to do, do just any activity do. if you any have a day on the too. islands. I think he could say shelling. Can I, well, I mean, too I, easy. Would, I would say just get out on the water. Right. It doesn't matter who you go with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I you know I, I like the out islands, um, yeah. the history. I mean the beaches. Uh, you know 
We'd agree with that. Yeah, we'd, we'd, we're, we're avid boaters. Yeah, yeah we, we'd definitely agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Get out on the water. Get out in the water, the water. whichever yeah. way you go. Do there's it. plenty to see, as Brian can testify to, or test yeah. to. It's, there's plenty for everybody, you know. Yeah. Whether it's Dad, you uh, want photography or. Close us out. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks very much, Brian. Thanks for that joining awesome. us. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. That was awesome. Yeah. I'm sure we'll do it again sometime. I just want to say a quick thank you to our sponsors Bailey's General Store. Doc Ford's Rum Bar and Grill, Spoon Drift Island Bowls, Three Crafty Ladies, Gator Bites, Tail and Ale, Priscilla's of Sanibel, Coco e Cabana, and Suncatcher's Dream. Thanks very much. Yeah. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to do it. And uh, thanks very much for joining us, Brian. Um, we'll see you on the next one. All right. Thank you.